All right, the defense is always good, but how good? Because there's that term college football playoff being thrown around concerning Florida football. You lose your number one tackler. You lose your top sack guy. You lose your best cornerback. Um, generally thought that the front seven was the strength last year, but does that shift to the secondary and there being more questions about the front seven in 2020? I say it's split, Mark, really, honestly. <laughs> They're really strong at cornerback, I think, with Kyrie Elam, uh, the true, he, true freshman last year, made the game ceiling interception versus Virginia last year, played really, really good when he was on the field. Um, you know, when he had to fill in for CJ Henderson or Marco Wilson, whenever those guys uh, couldn't play. Um, Marco Wilson comes back as well. So there's your, you know, your top two corners. I think they'll find a place for Amari Bernie, Chester Kimbrough in that nickel star spot. They'll feel really good with either one of those guys there. Mark, the big question is that safety uh, for Florida and the inconsistency that we see there so much uh, with Sean Davis and Donovan Steiner. And um, will Trey Dean make uh, an appearance there? There's the guy who two years ago filled in when uh, when uh, Marco Wilson went down with an injury. He was kind of forced into that outside cornerback position. He played okay as a true freshman. But we knew he wasn't going to stick there with when, when you know Florida had C.J. Henderson and Marco Wilson there. He wasn't going to play outside all that much, so they shifted him to nickel uh, to take over for Chauncey Gardner Johnson last year, and, and it didn't it didn't turn out too well. Uh, so now they'll probably try him at safety, uh, and you know and, and help with Brad you know Brad Stewart, Sean Davis, Donovan Steiner. Florida needs some more athleticism back there. They need a lot more consistency back there. Sean Davis and Brad Stewart are gifted athletically. Uh, but so inconsistent. Donovan Steiner, he'll make a big player every now and then, but inconsistent back there as well. So Florida just needs uh, a safety that can break down plays in front of them. They don't give up a whole lot of deep passes behind them. It's just out of position on, on a lot of runs. You know, LSU, a lot of you know when Clyde Edwards Alaire went off on Florida last year, it was you know, the safeties couldn't break down and tackle him. They were right there. He was right there in front of them and couldn't break couldn't break break down and make a tackle uh, against a running back there. So. Uh, that, that, that's probably the biggest question. I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, you lose Jabari Zuniga and you lose Jonathan Grenard. With Todd Grantham at defensive coordinator, I'm not worried about find, trying to find a pass rusher. He's going to find a pass rusher. Two years ago, it was Ja'Kai Polite and, and, and Jabari Zuniga. Last year, Jonathan Grenard comes in as a transfer. And when Jabari Zuniga was on the field as well, those got two guys produced. Mark, they still bring back 28 and a half sacks from last year's team. That you know, 49 sacks on the year, they still bring back 28 and a half of those. Uh, between Chris Bogle, Mambu Diabate, Jeremiah Moon, and uh, Zachary Carter, they still bring back a good bit of sacks. That leads the SEC, uh, with, with how many sacks they're bringing back as well. Cole Kubert tweeted that out, uh, last week. So, we talk Grantham, they're not going to have an issue trying to find a pass rusher. That, that's going to be a given in his offense or in, in his defense. But you got you got to replace David Reese at linebacker. Ventro Miller, James Houston will lead the way there. I think Mambu Diabate will he'll he'll be a pass rusher. But I think they'll slide him at linebacker a bit too, get to get some more athleticism uh, there at the linebacker position. So there are a lot of questions. I think there are some answers, but the the, the, the have to be a lot proven uh, first there, Mark. But you know the defense is okay, Mark. It's just can they play better in spots? That, that that's the issue. You know, you went to Baton Rouge last year. And no shame in stopping, not being able to stop LSU, but they were way overmatched. Todd Grantham had no answer whatsoever uh, for Joe Burrow in that offense. And then, of course, the game in Jacksonville in the Georgia game, you know, you held, yes, you held Georgia to 24 points, but you couldn't get off the field. You let them have third down after third down after th third down. You couldn't put your offense on the field to get some points, couldn't get sacks in that game. They've sacked Jake Fromm once in the last two years, so – the defense has been really good overall. It's just got to get better in the clutch in the big games. So is Brenton Cox the guy that gets them off the field many times and, and makes game-changing plays? That, that that's, the, that's the big question there. Five-star transfer from Georgia right before the season last year. Couldn't get him eligible to play last year. And probably, to me, was a blessing in disguise. Florida didn't need him last year. They didn't need that. They had Jabari Zuniga and Jonathan Grenard. Yeah, Zuniga was hurt. You may have could have put him in there, but – I'm not sure he makes that much of a difference versus LSU and Georgia. I don't think you win those games because Britton Cox is on the field. You need him more this year to fill in for Jonathan Grenard and Jabari Zuniga. So I think it was kind of a blessing in disguise. He didn't get uh, uh, eligible last year. So five-star transfer, played okay in limited time in his first season at Georgia. Got 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 some playing time, especially late in the season and, and in the bowl game uh, versus Texas as well uh, that year. So, uh, yeah, Florida will be counting on him. Him and Jeremiah Moon, uh, Zachary Carter – 
uh, Mamoudi Abate. I think you know those those are the guys that you're going to have to watch out for for you know the the next you know Todd Grantham <laughs> pass rusher that he's uh, did so well in his first two years at Florida. Is Amari Bernie locked down in a particular position? They can slide him, Mark, linebacker. He, he, they, late his first season, 2018, uh, I remember going back and watching the Peach Bowl and sitting there in the stands. I'm like, man, they're playing Amari Bernie a lot at linebacker. We didn't see it during the season a, a whole lot. So, you know, it led us to believe that he was going to play some linebacker in 2019, and he did, but he got hurt. Uh, and so, it was inconsistently on, on the field. I think he would have played better had, had he been healthy. But they can slide him to nickel. They can slide him to, to linebacker. That's one thing about Todd Grantham and his recruiting in his in, in these cycles at Florida since he's been there. A lot of versatile pieces. A lot of defensive ends that can go play that rush buck in position. The rush bu buck in position that can go play a linebacker. A linebacker that can go play you know in that nickel corner like Amari Bernie, uh, athletic enough to do that. Bernie can play safety too if, if they really wanted him to, and they got into a spot they needed him to. So, Bernie, I'm not sure they really lock him down at any position. Uh, there, they can. It's going to mostly be linebacker in, in that nickel spot. I think that they'll have him in there if they want a bigger body than uh, a bigger body than Chester Kimbrough at the nickel position and, and maybe run down situations. I think that's where you'll see Bernie uh, in past situations. I still think you may see Kimbrough out there at that nickel spot, but Bernie's so athletic, and I think if he can bounce back from that injury last year, he'll be on the field a lot more. Folks, we've been talking to David for, my goodness, I don't know what it's been, six, seven years, 2013, 14, something in that range. Got to be. I started Gators Breakdown in 2016, so yeah, probably 2014. Yeah, we were probably at it for 2015, yeah. yeah. Um, so you couldn't kick the ball. We were always talking kicking. We were always talking about what the, the, the <laughs> offensive line was a mess. You didn't have a quarterback, and your special teams were a mess, yeah. especially the one season. But 34 out of 38 from Evan McPherson. Florida's got one there. Uh, they feel really good about McPherson. Um, as you said, Martin, just really consistent. A after years of ineptitude there, you went from Eddie Pinheiro, who kicked really good uh, for Florida, to, to now Evan McPherson uh, there. So Florida feels really good uh, about what he's brought to the table in the last two years there. Not much of a worry when he has to go out there and kick field goals. Maybe, hopefully, he doesn't have to go kick a lot of field goals this year <laughs> when Florida's in scoring, in scoring position. But uh Feel pretty good uh, if he has to. Um, and then, you know, Florida will have to place, re re replace punter uh, this year. So Jeremy Crawshaw comes in, uh, an Australian punter. Uh, so I think, you know, Florida's got one of those. We've seen LSU have plenty of those type of punters there. So uh, hopefully that, that kind of bleeds over into uh, having success for Florida as well. But uh, special teams, that, Mark, overall, you, I know you just asked about kicker there. I thought we'd see more a little bit from special teams from, from Dan Mullen and, and learning so much from Urban Meyer because you remember Urban Meyer's time at Florida and Jeff Demps and Chris Rainey and Brandon James are out there blocking punts and and, and returning you know punts for touchdowns with Brandon James, kickoffs for touchdowns. We haven't seen a whole lot of that uh, there. So I thought we'd see a lot more of getting a lot more team speed on the field, starters out there uh, going out there and blocking punts. We just haven't necessarily seen that. So it's not too much of a knock. It's just something I thought we would see more of uh, with Dan Mullen coming over and having that team speed that he has at Florida. Of course, it's nowhere near the team speed that was here, you know, in 2007, eight, nine, uh, around that time when Urban Meyer was head coach. And, you know, maybe that's part of it. Uh, I still thought, think we would see uh, a bit more uh, coming from the, uh, you know, block, block punt specialist and, and punt return, kickoff return. Yeah. In terms of the return game, right on cue there, David, 13th in the SEC, as you well know, out of 14 teams in return yardage. So yeah, that, that and could help hidden yardage. Right, and they had Freddie Swain back there returning punts, and it was more of a he's not going to drop the ball. We know he's going to go out there and he's going to catch it, and we'll get put we'll put the offense on the field, uh, kick off. Yeah, just um, you know, just haven't put I just haven't put a whole lot of speed uh, out there. More of a just don't go mess it up type of <laughs> type of guy out there, and 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 get off the field and go go put the offense on the field. I, I think I know the answer to this. What is success in 2020? What, what's your measurement on success? Of course, Dan Mullen takes a four and eight. Seven and five probably would have been successful and, and acceptable by Gator fans that first year. And boom, he knocks it out of the park. Top 10 finish. Adds that win. Eliminates bad losses last year. And now here we go. And thinking about that kicking game, I'm thinking this trend against Georgia, you get blown up by five touchdowns. Mullen kicks in. You lose by three scores in what was a close game till about 10 minutes left. It's down to a touchdown last year. 
uh, maybe you need that kick this year. But uh, yeah. su success for for Florida this year. What does that spell? Yeah, beating Georgia and Jacksonville market and, and representing the uh, SEC East in Atlanta. Uh, it, and the, the, the popular question out there, if not this year, when? Uh, that's what everybody's saying. And it's not necessarily to say Dan Mullen can't win another SEC in 2021 or 2022. But with Georgia replacing Jake Fromm and DeAndre Swift, a slew of offensive linemen, yes, they return that defense, and that's going to carry that team. And But, you know, Todd Munkin comes in, that offensive coordinator, got some questions there. So you know, this is this is the first time we've had so many questions about Georgia. And so this, this is the time you, you return your quarterback and Kyle Trask, you know, pretty much what you have in returning uh, at receiver at running back. You got a few, a few questions on defense, but you know, you've played well there the last couple of years, but you know, got to get over that hump. And this is the year to do it. As I said, not saying you can't do it in the next couple of years, but you know, this is the best chance. And with the schedule Florida has as well, drawing Ole Miss out of the West, of course you, you host LSU at home. You don't leave the state of Florida all that much uh, throughout the whole season. Georgia has to play Alabama and Auburn. They have a little bit tougher schedule. You might can afford a loss to Georgia and, and still go to Atlanta, but that's that, that never, that's never happened uh, it was, since the SEC's been in divisions. Florida's never lost to Georgia and then gone on to play in the SEC championship game. So, first of all, it, it's important just to get over that hump and prove you can beat Georgia. Dan Mullen has not had a lot of success uh, against Kirby Smart. You know, blown out. Three years ago at Mississippi State, hung tough. Uh, you know these last couple of years. You know Georgia's been in control of those games. Florida's been scrappy and and, and, and found uh, and has found the way to keep the games close. But it, pretty much the games have never been in question that Georgia was going to win those games. Uh, so you know it, it's just kind of time to live up to it. Mario. A lot of people were picking Florida going into that Georgia game last year. Georgia was struggling coming off of a loss against South Carolina. And didn't look too good against Kentucky, and you know a lot of in Florida hung tooth and nail with LSU and Florida, Florida was playing better going into that game. There was no shame in picking Florida, but you know, just kind of fell on their face there in Jacksonville. So kind of 2020 mark really kind of the no excuse tour. Uh, you got to go and find a way to beat Georgia. We took a look at uh, Jamie Newman uh, the other day right here, did a breakdown. And surprisingly, uh, when he first got the job at Wake Forest, he he was really impressive against some decent opponents, not great opponents, but NC State Memphis and, and led clutch drives in the fourth quarter to win games in the final 30 seconds. Last year, good numbers overall. You break it down against the good opponents. And I know he's at Wake, but he still had a good team around him, decent team around him. But, and was a little overmatched at the skill positions and offensive line. But still, he did not play well against good teams at all last year. Yeah, and that's the big question. You, you talk to some Georgia people, oh, he'll have so much talent around him. Well, he's also going to be playing a lot better defenses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I exactly. mean, it, 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 it's a catch-22 with that. And I, look, he's going to be a good quarterback. Right? Is it going to be enough? And you know, with that defense, it may, he doesn't have to be a great quarterback. Now, eventually, when you make, when you reaches the SEC championship game, if he reaches the SEC championship game and reaches the college football playoff, he's going to have to be great in those games. But leading up to there, he'll you know he'll probably have to have a great game against Alabama week three, a great game against Auburn later on, Florida as well. Uh, you know, so there, there's going to be a time this season where his number is going to be called, where that defense won't be enough. Much like you know you go to the SEC championship game last year uh, against LSU, they're going to have to play their best game. Jake Fromm is going to have to play a great game. It's going to be the same story this year. You know, there's going to be a game out there, whether it be Alabama, whether it be. Uh, Auburn, whether it be Florida, you know, South Carolina snuck up and got him last year. There's going to have to be a game out there. He's going to have to play great against a really good defense. And, and can he do it? That's going to be the question. You know, we've saw Kyle Trask have a pretty good performance against an Auburn defense last year, a pretty good performance against a really good LSU defense last year. Uh, you know, str did struggle versus Georgia defense last year. So there are going to be games where you're going to have to play great to get a big win. And, you know, with, with Jamie Newman, we're going to have to see it. We didn't see it at Wake Forest against the, the better defenses on the schedule. So I think it, I think it's still legit. Yes, he's got more talent around him, but, you know, a lot better defenses as well. Yeah, you face the number one defense in Clemson. You can almost throw out that game. There's no way they're going to win. Yeah, yeah. They're get blown out by 50 points. Other than that, they faced a top 20 Michigan State defense in the bowl game, and he only went 12 for 27 in that game. Otherwise, he did not face a top 40 defense. This year, he's facing six top 30 defenses. Yeah, different story, Mark. Different story. Yep. And, it, it's not, and it's not to 
not to sit here and say, you know, he's not a good quarterback, not to sit there and say ACC don't have good teams. I mean, we see it, you know, the last week of the season every year, a lot of ACC teams beat SEC teams. It, it, it happens, but, you know, week in and week out, it is a different story. David Waters, Gators Breakdown, again, on your favorite audio platform or right here on YouTube. David, we couldn't do it without you. We appreciate you stopping by, breaking down the Gators. Thanks, Mark.